In this video, I'll show you how to create a photo slideshow in Premiere Pro. Hi everyone, I'm the Web Guru, and I create tutorials on video, photography, and audio, so be sure to subscribe and leave a comment. So here inside Premiere Pro, I recommend changing some settings before you import any images. So go up to Premiere Pro Preferences on Mac. On Windows, this is going to be Edit Preferences. And then down to Timeline. And by default, still images are set to five seconds long. And in my opinion, that's a little bit long. So I'm going to change this down to three seconds. You can change it to whatever you want, but three seconds is usually a good duration. We're also going to be adding some video transitions. And the default duration is one second long, which in my opinion is kind of long. So I'm going to change this to half a second. First of all, make sure that this unit here is seconds. And then I'm going to change this to 0.5, which is half a second. And now I'm going to import my images. If you've already imported images, you may want to delete them and then re-import them if you want all of your images to be three seconds long. So now I'm gonna go up to File, Import, and then I have all my images organized in a folder. So I'm gonna click, and then I'm going to Shift-click to select all of the images. And now you can see them all here in the project panel. Now, right now, avoid dragging any images into the timeline because that will create a sequence with some very unusual settings. So now the next step is to create a sequence. We're gonna go up to File, New, and then Sequence. There are a lot of presets in here, but I like to use the ones in the digital SLR folder. 1080p, and I'm going to choose the one that's 30 frames a second, but you're welcome to choose one of the other ones as well. And you'll notice that this is going to create a sequence that is 1920 by 1080 pixels, which is a very common video resolution. I'm also going to change the name here to Slideshow. Now the sequence is open inside of the timeline, and now I can add my images. So in the project panel, I'm going to click on the first image, and then I'm going to shift click on the last image, and then I'm going to drag those into the timeline. And now you can see them all right here. I'm gonna zoom in on the timeline a little bit so that I can see them a little bit better. And now I do have an issue. My sequence is set to 1920 by 1080, but my images are actually high resolution images from my digital camera. They are around 4,000 pixels wide, so they don't fit. And they're actually being cropped, and I can't see them properly. So I'm gonna show you a trick. Inside of the timeline, I'm going to select all of the clips by choosing Command A, that's Control A on Windows, to select all then right click one of the images, and then I'm going to choose set to frame size. Uh, I always avoid using scale to frame size because that will actually rasterize your image, which means that it will be lower quality. So I'm going to choose set to frame size. And now you can see that the image has been scaled to fit within the video frame, and now all of my images fit inside of the video frame. Now, one problem or one issue is that I do see black bars on the left and the right. Now, that might not be an issue for some people, but I am going to try to remove that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click away from all of the images. Then I'll select the first one by clicking on it. And then I'm gonna to go to the Effect Controls panel. If you can't see it, go to Window, Effect Controls and it'll appear on your screen. And I am going to change the scale. I'm actually going to scale this up. If you can't see scale, then click on the triangle next to the word motion. And as I scale this image up, 
you're gonna be able to see that it gets bigger and bigger and now it actually fills the entire video frame and now I'm gonna change the position and I'm going to just reposition it until I'm happy with the composition. Now, unfortunately, if you're gonna do this for each one of your images, there's no quick and easy way to do it. We just have to go through one at a time because each image is actually slightly different. So I'm gonna to go to the next image. What you have to do is you have to click on the image like that, and you also have to move the playhead so that you can see the image. Then you can go up, and I normally increase the scale. Then I adjust the position if I need to. And I'm just gonna do a couple more of these images. Now here's an example of where the image is cropped at the top. I wanna to see more of the sky. So I'm going to change the position. Another thing to be aware of is that you'll have to be careful with any of your vertical images because if you scale them up too much, I'm gonna click on the image. If you scale the image too much, it's gonna get cropped a lot, and that might be a problem. So you may have to live with the black bars for some of your vertical images. Now, another thing that I'd like to do is to change the order of the images. So let me show you a couple of tricks. First of all, on the video track, you can double click this empty space here, and that will increase the height of the track and I can actually start seeing the contents of the clips and then I'm going to zoom by dragging right here so now I can see what each image contains and I would actually like this image right here to be my opening shot I want it to be at the beginning of the timeline but if I just drag it to the beginning it's actually going to overwrite or delete the clip that used to be there so that's a problem. I'm gonna undo that with Command Z. That would be Control Z on Windows. Let me show you a trick. You can hold down the Command button on Mac, the Control button on Windows, and then you can drag the image, then release the mouse, then release the Command or the Control button, and now it's basically moved the image without deleting or overwriting anything. So this is a great little trick. You can just keep holding down the command or the control button and then you can move your images wherever you want. Now be careful and practice a little bit because you'll want to make sure that you drag the images to the edit points and you'll also want to make sure that you don't delete any other images. So it's a little bit tricky, might take some practice, but it's a great shortcut. Now let's talk about transitions. Right now we basically just have cuts between the clips, but I would like there to be like a smooth transition between the clips. So let me show you a couple of tricks for that. Um, I am going to go back to Command A or Control A to select all. And then I'm gonna go up to the sequence menu and choose apply video transition. The keyboard shortcut for that is Command D or Control D. This will automatically place the default transition between all of the clips, which is a cross dissolve. And now you can see that the images fade one into the next. If you wanna become a little bit more creative with your transitions, you can go to the effects panel. If you can't find it, go up to window and then effects, and then open up the video transitions folder and there's all sorts of interesting transitions here. So for example, if I go into the slide folder, I can use the slide transition, and I'm just gonna drag it over top of one of the existing ones, and now the image slides onto the screen. There's also inside of the iris folder, they have different types of irises. Here's like a round iris, and now the transition will look like this. You can do like a page turn, so inside of the page peel folder, they have like the page turn, and I can drag this into the timeline, and now I have a series of interesting transitions. Now, I generally don't use a lot of fancy transitions because I really like the focus to be on the image itself, but that's completely up to you. Now, let's talk about music. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the project panel and I've already imported a music clip, 
So I'm simply going to drag that into the timeline onto one of the audio tracks. And then if I zoom out on the timeline a little bit, I can see that the music track is much longer than the slideshow. So I need to trim it. So I am going to select the razor tool and then I'm going to cut or split the music just by clicking. Then I need to go back to the selection tool and then I'm going to click on the extra music. I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard and now the music and the slideshow are the same duration, so that's very good. I also recommend adding transitions to the music. So I'm going to click to select the music clip and then go up to the sequence menu and choose apply audio transition. This will put the default transition at the beginning and the end of the music, so now it'll be much smoother. And now I have a photo slideshow with transitions and music. And you may be interested in adding a slight animation to your images by possibly panning and zooming across them. And that is sometimes called the Ken Burns effect. And I'm going to be doing another tutorial on that topic. So uh, be sure to subscribe or you can look in my videos right now. It might be available. Now finally, let's talk about exporting. So make sure you click inside of the timeline. Then go up to File, Export, Media. And then we're going to use one of the presets. So in the Format menu, choose H264. Under the Preset menu, you can choose the default, which is Match Source High Bitrate. That's like a good all-purpose preset. I'm going to click on the Output Name. And I'm going to save this one to my desktop. And then finally, I can click on the Export button. And now if I go to my computer, I can see that on my desktop, I have a file called slideshow.mp4. I can upload that, I can publish it, I can share it with my friends and my family, and it's pretty much all set right now. So I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. Be sure to comment and subscribe, and let me know what type of videos you'd like me to produce, and keep learning and growing, and I will see you in the next one.